When I had my transplant, I could barely walk. I could barely, I couldn't do anything for myself. The first time to stand up was just all I could do. It felt good, just walk down that hallway. I think I felt right away like that magnetic pull was definitely meant to be. Organ donation love story. <laughs> I wasn't sick before. My mom happened to be a nurse, and then my liver enzymes happened to be in the thousands. I know my parents were absolutely devastated. Um, they thought I was gonna die. And I remember about three days of being um, at the hospital, and then I have no recollection of anything that happened until I woke up. The only thing I remember is like waking up with the sun in my window um, and wondering where I was. I couldn't do anything for myself, so thankfully I had my parents to help me through it. It took me about a year to fully recover. And then I finally, I went back to college and I ended up getting my degree in health communication. And then eventually I started working um, at the Heart and Lung Clinic in Grand Rapids um, where I met Tracy. So he recommended me to go on the heart transplant list and that he knew the director of the transplant clinic in, up in Grand Rapids, so he got me an appointment up there. They said I was too healthy to have a transplant and told me I'll just keep on doing what I do and come back as I needed. After they pushed me off the list, I was at my lowest of lows. So my mental, I just had my mental game kicked in and I just started doing everything I could. I met Tracy, he was in the hospital though quite a bit of the time. It was fine and nice, nice guy and I wanted to help inspire other people um, going through the transplant process. When you are at your lowest of lows at the transplant clinic, you become um, family. a family. Yeah. She was always there and she was always a friendly face. I was going to be moving to a different clinic and so he happened to come in that day um, and I said, hey, let me know if, you know, if and when you get your heart transplant. I was just going through Facebook one day and we must have had a mutual friend or something. That's when I found her and I just wanted to touch base with her and tell her, you know, I got to go back on the transplant list, give her an update of where I was at. When I met her and when we had lunch, I just looked at her a different way because she was no longer part of my care team. So it just, it's just like, wow, she's gorgeous, you know. We just started talking more and more, and then the next weekend, we went for another date, and then the next weekend after that, we went for another one, and then it was after that, it was just pretty much every weekend. And like, we felt inseparable. I think in a way, it was just kind of like a magnetic connection. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I woke up, and my daughter was there, and I said, what happened? And she says, you had your transplant. When you're going through the transplant process, you are relying on everybody around you and your family and your caregivers to take care of you, feed you, do whatever they have to do to get you to the point where you take care of yourself. No one can understand what they're going through unless they're going through it. Watching him, you know, have his transplant, I mean, I wanted to be there as much as possible, just like stay strong for him as well. I got out of the hospital at the end of May, I think it was May 29th on her transplant anniversary, June 14th, I asked her to marry me. That was pretty funny. And then he said, turn around, and then he was on his knee, and I was like, oh my God. I said, I'm on anti-rejection meds, um, you can't say no to me. <laughs> like to think that maybe like my positive outlook and us yeah. being together yeah. was, yeah, was definitely meant to be. I love you. I love you more. <laughs> no. It's the greatest feeling. I mean, you will, it will make, it'll, it'll change your life to the point that you can't even imagine unless you are in the shoes of being a recipient. You have a second chance at life. <laughs>